and local recording in three, two, one. Today's episode's brought to you by Blevins Placement Matches. Drop the beat! Welcome to High Noon Podcast, the competitive Overwatch podcast. I am your host, The Blevins. With me, as always, is Deathblow. What's up, buddy? Not too much. How's it going? It is going great. And okay, I'm gonna. St- I'll just start it off right now. Shame, Shame. Bell. Shame. Shame Bell for not watching Game Shame. of Thrones. And uh, so we can't go over the spoilers that we normally would. No, we, we're not doing spoilers. <laughs> we're, we're never doing spoilers. Um. When, one time, we might potentially be doing spoilers, okay? You'll have to be here for the very beginning of the after show next week because oh, I am right. opening our Skype call with a huge spoiler from the third episode because if you haven't seen it yet and you're not caught up yet, you deserve it. Yep, okay, so here's here's the story. For those of you who didn't hear last week, I am purposely skipping – the first and second episode well i have purposely skipped the first and second episode yes of game of thrones for my girlfriend yes okay you can shame fine you know what i know i'm not doing this but i know death wants to so i'll press the button for him i'm shame belling if i if i had harrison jones uh attack (laughs) i would be playing it but um I'm 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 a I'm a good I'm a good boyfriend or whatever the contract says. Um, so I'm waiting for those, but I will definitely be watching uh, the third episode. So I've given Death full license to just spoil everything if I haven't seen it for some reason uh, by then. But I'm confident. I'm I'm, I'm super confident. I'm going to see him. I hope you don't, and I just get to ruin your day. Just get to, just get to. Yeah, you'll for, you'll forget about it. You'll just be super mad that she hasn't let you watch it yet. You'll open Skype, oh, and I'll, it, it isn't I'll even that she on. hasn't let me watch it. She was like, "Oh, you can watch it," but I'm like, "Ah, whatever. I'll just wait." I'll just, Two bad I'll decisions. Just, yeah. Two I'm, bad decisions. Yeah, she gave yeah. you an out, and you didn't even take it. <laughs> if only you really liked the show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if only you actually cared, yes, Scott. But I, instead, and we'll 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 transition this over to what did we do last week. I, instead of watching two episodes of Game of Thrones, I watched the entirety of Westworld. So that's that, that that's got to be good enough, right? That's... Not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Man, we are back to back on How I Met Your Mother <laughs> references. It's true. Yeah. So we even synced up a little bit on that one. Yep. Well, I mean, we did have we did have a pre-show that is probably going to be longer than the episode. So that's true. It's not the first <laughs> but, time we've told the joke. <laughs> but uh, what about you? Did you do anything fun this weekend? Well, I did win my open division match this week. Um, turns out it's a lot easier when the oppos- opponent doesn't show up. Ah. Uh, I was a little disappointed, though, because I always do a quick look just to see, you know, you you look at the, uh, you do a master Overwatch search of the Mm -hmm. battle tag of your opponent, you know, Um, and it was like the number 24 junk rat and competitive uh, on, yeah, on overbuff. So that would have been hilarious and awesome to play. It is a mid masters player who mains junk rat. Mm. Um, So it would have been a lot of fun. But yeah, they have not shown up for a single one of their matches yet. So who? Who knows why they're still in the bracket uh, looking at you, ESCA and Blizzard and whoever's in charge of Wait, this is, tournament. ESCA which is, is running this tournament? I, yeah, I believe so. It's on their website. But oh, um, Interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's honestly been, uh, you know, as for as fun as Contenders was, this, not so much. There's like this four hour gap that you just have to like show up in. And not being an irresponsible team and everything, like, I get the guys on at the start of the time window, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and then we sit there for three hours and wait as the other team strolls in with five minutes left before uh... they're disqualified. Um, and then if it 
if we start right at the end and it goes for more than four matches, you're definitely not starting Game of Thrones on time. So uh, wow. if I'm being perfectly honest, it's been such a mess from that standpoint. We mm-hmm. might not continue in the tournament either. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm really a little disappointed from the open division. Uh, if that's what we have to look forward to going forward of just, yeah. I mean, I get no shows week one, even week two, you don't want to disqualify, but, um, they've no showed three times by now and I'm going to watch. And if they have a pairing next week, I'm going to be pretty upset that the tournament is just, well, whatever they'll show up if they show up like yeah, that. That's really nobody's bad. having fun. Nobody's having fun yeah, no on that week. Like, from that. Yeah, that's terrible. And fix it, please. Um, but yeah. other than that, it's, uh, you know, we got our, our Lucio player locked up and um, looks like it's actually on ESLgaming.com. So it's, oh, it's ESL. ESL. I don't know okay. why I thought it was ESEA. Yeah, um, I was going to say ESEA is Counter-Strike lobbies, uh, competitive Counter-Strike. So I was like, hmm, interesting. Yeah, I, I must have got it mixed up. But yeah, it's 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 ESL doing it. So please, okay. I don't know, fix this. Like it, it is night and day how awesome contenders was to participate in and that website crashed in the middle of the whole pairing thing like it was theoretically a nightmare and it was infinitely better than this experience has been so far so i don't know i feel like something should change for the open division but nonetheless if you want to participate in it or really be anything whatsoever in uh, overwatch you're gonna have to kind of slog through it so yeah and i guess it's i mean it's really just an operational thing that they need that they can probably pretty easily fix um oh so the other things i did this weekend um i played a couple of placement matches so we we got we can we can get that out of the way maybe this week maybe nope Nope. doomfist is out tomorrow in podcast land uh future past podcast land yep so that means that starting next week like you will be on beard bet yeah. Oh, yeah. We're oh. beard bed is on, and once Doomfist comes out, I, I tried to play Doomfist on PTR, and I couldn't lock him in fast enough. So it's like, why am I even trying to play? I don't want to play PTR or other stuff. I want to play so, Doomfist. Uh, so what do you say then? We give you till a week from Thursday. Is that when the season ends? No, that's when Doomfist comes out. Oh, okay. A so you have one week Thursday. after the release of Doomfist. Uh, I don't know why I would agree to this, but fine, fine. All right. Done. So stick Lock it up. Why would I say that? Fine. I'm, no, I'm doing it. I'm just going to do them tonight. So we'll be able to catch in, catch up on it next week's episode, and you will have like a couple days to yeah. to wrap it up, or uh, the next episode you will be clean shaven and everybody will have to watch on YouTube. Oh, man. It will be so bad. I'll come over and shave it myself. <laughs> God, that would be so bad. Um, so let's save the beard. <laughs> <laughs> Only you can save the beard. Yep. Um, and then the other thing I did was I played a lot of Pokemon Go. I got I caught an Articuno. F- feels good, man. Gross. Always blue. Always blue. Always blue. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, let's move on to what did you guys do last week? And we have a new patron um, who was actually from the week before, but I'm an idiot. Um, and the email, I didn't get the email for some reason, but it's my fault. Um, so huge thanks to Christopher S. at the $1 patron level. Um Shout outs to all the patrons, and if you guys want to support the show uh, financially, you always can go to patreon.com slash high noon podcast, uh, where you'll get exclusive uh, access into the Discord only parts of our Discord, but our Discord is also now open live to the public. And Chris, message me on Discord uh, so that I can give you access to the patron channels. Yes. Um, We will do that as well. Um, so yes, huge thanks there. Um, and also part of the what did you guys do last week is of course my favorite part of the show. Overwatch today meme of the week. Of course, the meme of the week. Um, and this meme of the week is probably my favorite Overwatch meme, and this is more so even than the I need healing. Um, and if you combine this with I Need Healing, that's probably my ultimate favorite. But it is the, uh, Dr- I call it Drake Kaplan, but it's the uh, the Drake Hotline Bling, but it's skinned as Jeff Kaplan. So it's the uh, no, no and then the, the yes. You, you guys know what it is. Um, but the, the top says uh, Sombra ARG with the no, and then the yes is the Tease Doomfist that release of Game of the Year and wait just as long. <laughs> um 
So yeah, no one really like Doomfist has been like teased like a million years ago, and no one cared that it took forever for him to come out. Whereas the Sombra thing, everyone was like up in a tizzy about. It's like kind of weird that <laughs> people got mad about the Sombra but not the Doomfist. But uh, I think everyone's happy now, and now even Sombra took even longer to actually get played in competitive, and now she's super cool. Yeah, she's definitely at least a part of the game now. But I don't think people were mad that the ARG took so long to like run its course. I think they were mad that the ARG discovered timers that led to games that discovered timers to more. Like it was yeah. just like you never got anything. Like it didn't give you a name of an ability at one part at one point of it, right. or like you know it, it needed to be more flavorful instead of just like is sober's coming, sober's coming, well, yeah, but it, you know hiding it in and like, audio files. They made it to turn into really text. really complex. So like I get that, but like obviously you know the the superpower of Reddit you know figured it out or whatever uh, eventually. But like the payoff was nothing. Like you said. Yeah, the the payoff has to match the effort that you put into it. Right. It has to be rewarding in some way. Right. I mean, it was literally a Christmas story where <laughs> it's like they did all this thing and it just says drink more Ovaltine. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> that, that was really, really dumb. Um, and I, they, uh, one of the designers got interviewed at BlizzCon, and this was, you know, right when they actually revealed Sombra. And you know obviously like people were asking about it and they're like yeah no we're not doing that again we're not doing it like that again or nothing you know we've learned from that mistake <laughs> so i guess that's uh that's good i mean really they could have made the somber thing awesome but like if people figure it out give us something yeah like it I don't know. stupid but um like we alluded to at the top of the show this is probably going to be the shortest episode uh, of all time we really don't have a ton to talk about but we're here and we wanted to record so we are going to keep going so let's move right along to it's tournament talk it's like sitting ducks um so apex update like we alluded to last week still not done uh, it will be done in future past podcast world. It's going to be done tomorrow, right, or two days. I th I think it's Friday, Friday uh, yeah. that it that it plays, but it's like Friday in Korea time, and that means like Thursday night, Friday morning our time. I'm oh, not okay. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah. Uh, I know it will be very inconvenient for any of us in the United States to watch. So make sure you check it out on VODs. It'll be up by the time uh, the weekend uh, kicks off for you. Yes. Um, so, yeah, still not done. Uh, but, you know, in terms of the result and actually watching the VODs, I actually am kind of excited for it because this is like, you know, the one match of Apex I actually want to see. Uh, the finals. So definitely the one I pay the most attention to. Uh, you know, it's uh, obviously I'm, I'm still I still watch them in hopes of getting the uh, epic return of Yellow Hat McCree musical performance. <laughs> but uh, I don't know that we'll ever quite get there. No, um, but nonetheless, I mean, it's it's and really we kind of got taught a, a sharp lesson in this uh, this weekend that just because we don't pay much attention to other regions doesn't mean they're they're not really strong players. Yeah. Um, you know, so in as the league moves forward, it's even more and more important to keep an eye on the top teams and the top players from the other regions. Mm -hmm. Um so, you know, the, I don't think anybody was going to forget about Lunatic High or, you know, either right. of the two teams anytime soon. Um, but it's always great to, you know, just get a, a refresher on what their meta is like, you know, mm -hmm. what what comps they're playing uh, and, and how everything's going out there. Also, uh, should be after after Doomfist. So they oh, will have an opportunity right. to throw it in at the last second there with like two days practice uh, if they want to. Yeah, I'm hoping we do get to see it at least a little bit. Oh, it would be great. I mean, I think you definitely will if so one of the teams ends up in a 3-0 situation, like Doomfist is coming out uh, with a quickness, I would think. But, um, you know, it's it'll be interesting to see. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about Doomfist and let's break it down because there's not a whole lot in that section. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he fits in and where people try to use him. Yeah, um, I'm definitely looking forward to, to seeing him played and then also playing him. 
Yeah, um, I don't know that they'll allow him to be played, but he'll be oh, out. So if yeah. the tournament rules allow for it, then right. we've got a real shot at it. Well, I mean, they can't like stop the other changes from happening, right? So like the the nerfs and buffs and whatnot, they can't stop from happening. So like, just let people play. Like, those char- for all intents and purposes, those characters are different. So let's let's get Doomfist in this. Yeah, I don't know, but. Uh, let's move on uh, to the World Cup. We did see uh, the conclusion of uh, the Australia bracket, or I think that's the Sydney Group bracket. C, yeah, Group C and Group D played yeah. out in Sydney this weekend. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we saw at the top of those, we saw Sweden, uh, Australia, Japan, and Spain uh, end up at the top of those. And then we saw... Um, now, no, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Japan... In Spain, at the top of Group D? Yes. Finland's in Group D, bro. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we Let's just not lost, skip over that one. We lost, <laughs> uh, is that IDDQD? No, that's not. That's, um. I would enjoy watching <laughs> I'm forgetting who's on Finland. Well, I mean, nonetheless, they were they were obviously one of the you know one of the uh, the higher end seeds, you know, kind yeah. of the, the heavy favorites. Uh, last week, I did talk uh, about how you know this was kind of one of these tournaments where everything looked like it was gonna pretty much for the most part play oh, out exactly right, like yeah. we thought it was going to, right? Like we didn't see uh, a huge ton of basically room for these teams, but um, you know we have the. Uh, Finland is the rest in pajamas, just kind of squeezing oh, time right. in there. Yeah. Um, wow. So obviously, you know, we see the the struggles that rest in pajamas was experiencing carry over into this tournament. They continued to have problems. They just continued to not look, uh, you know, not look like a cohesive team where they were all playing on the same page. Mm-hmm. And Japan, you know, they were an underdog to be sure. But I, I mentioned it last week. Do not sleep on this team because any team that the country of Japan decides is going to represent them in a video game is going to have, a, you know, at least a puncher's chance at doing well yeah. in this tournament. Um, now, unfortunately for them, they don't go on to, uh, you know, qualify for BlizzCon, but they left the group stages uh, at number one and really turned a tournament that was boring me literally as it was going on like i was not super into it it was a little a little tough to force myself to watch the vods and you know pay super close attention Mm. to them i flipped it on its head i'm now like i'm in full world cup mode right now i really hope next uh, the next set of matches i'm not even 100 percent sure it's this coming weekend so i don't want to promise that um but you know i really hope the next set of matches is just as entertaining because it, it was a lot of fun to watch these play out um you know we saw the spain team who obviously uh, is is full Harry Hook, Toxican, Bromas, mm-hmm. uh, Dak, Winghaven, Neptuno. That's a star-studded roster. That's yeah. nothing to sneeze at. Um, you know, so it was great to see them get in there and and pull out a pretty decent finish. Unfortunately, they won't make it on to uh, the BlizzCon uh, top eight playoff, as it were. But um, you know, this was really that group that I said one of these groups has to just by law of large numbers and the way these things always work out. One of them has to have surprises. Yeah. One of them has to to kind of buck the trend of being a little on the boring side and i am hoping now because this one happened this early and didn't look like it was going to happen like i really and everybody thought finland and spain were going to come out on top of the groups mm-hmm. uh the group d and and it just did not work out that way so um you know big props to everybody that that played this weekend and and curiously enough the the group that provided all the excitement doesn't send anyone on anymore yeah it, it's it's funny because you know, we've we've harped on the Overwatch World Cup for the last two years, right? Um, where it's like, you know what? These aren't real teams. They're not playing for anything. It's like yada yada yada. Like, okay, whatever. It, I mean, it's like the Olympics. Like, it's fun, and like, it's like, oh, it's Olympics time. But like, none of these are real teams. They're just like athletes for sports. We don't care. But like, but I think this year and with the committees and how they did the overwatch world cup voting and whatnot and the the team deciding the teams really tried right so like most of the teams or at at least a lot of the teams are most if not all of an entire competitive roster 
Um, well, and this and this weekend epitomized that because yeah. while Spain was a bit a bit of a ragtag group, mm-hmm. um, you know, Finland was five of six rest in pajamas. Sweden is misfits. Yeah. Um, and Australia, Australia is, is blank esports. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this was the, the one time and the two teams that were literally at least Japan might have been as well. I don't know for sure. Um, but, you know, the two teams that were, hey, we sent six people. Yeah. Guess who's moving on? Right. Um, you know, so I, I think that's telling as well. But, you know, obviously lots of great Overwatch happened from the other teams, too. Yeah. And I, I, I really I think. Honestly, like I think it's the best way to do it. I think it it touches both it touches both realms. Like the people get the people get to vote for something. That's the committee. So you can have your favorite streamer or whoever like on the committee. But then the committee can decide like, okay, we want to try to win or we want to do whatever. And I think the committees have no other reason than to just go for the win, right? Like try to make the best team. And if you have the best teams playing against the best teams, then you're going to have the best Overwatch to watch. And you know whether you care about competitive or not, you want to see good Overwatch. And it's it's not fun to see a bunch of four O's um, <clears throat> or a bunch of three O's. You want to see competitive Overwatch. So I think putting together teams that are going to be good uh, is going to be better for everyone. So and even even if you want to see your favorite streamers or whatever, but like it's just not like it. It ends up diminishing and watering down the the end product i think as funny as it would be to see tim the tap man just like standing up and flexing at people after he kills them because he's yeah. he, you know or doing his his camera look thing like yeah. you'd have to have the production team <laughs> zoom in on him three times you know okay <laughs> Uh, that would be that would be a whole lot of fun, but I, I'm definitely of the camp where I'm, I just want uh, at all times. I don't know in anything I do, I like I, I just want the best teams, number one and number two, to play against each other all day, every day. It would be the most fun, but I guess you'd never see any <laughs> any variety that way. So. Right, and I mean, if they want to do something that's a little bit less competitive, then like bill it as that completely, like make wacky games or something. Like we probably won't be watching those, but if they want to do it, like do it. Don't do like a, a a halfway competitive, halfway fun format, and that's yeah. kind of what the Overwatch World Cup was last year. But it looks like they're really trying this year. So, um, and just to be just to be clear uh, from these two uh, from these two groups, we saw Sweden and Australia who are going to be going to BlizzCon. So it was yeah. Make sure you guys check out the Australia versus Japan match yeah. though. Was- it was really the good. first one of the playoff matches that didn't end in a 3-0. It was tied at the end of the four rounds that they yep. play, you know, uh, and, and they had to go to uh, Oasis to decide mm-hmm. things. So uh, make sure you guys check that out. It was a really, really strong match, really showcased uh, really, really a lot of the good. oceanic talent of Australia that we never get to see anymore. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, the Japan players, AKTM was, I mean, just some of his plays and some of his shots were just out of this world. Uh, so definitely, uh, definitely worth the watch there. Make sure you guys tune into that one. All knowing T Mobile hashtag sellout. Um, but, Golden Boy did a really good job pulling hex duty. Yeah, I know. Ah, oh, man, I, I just wish it was hexagrams. But right, let's move uh, right along and oh, let's break it down. Let's break it down. So we got some some news. Uh, I think it's it's kind of more of what we've been seeing. Death, do you want to kind of go over what what we're we're breaking down to this week? Yeah, so uh, we were just seeing uh, some some slight roster changes here. We do have Tempo Storm also uh, dropping the entire uh, Overwatch roster. So I'm I'm looking to see because I know they've had multiple at a time, but I don't think, um, yeah, teams they don't have any uh, Overwatch teams listed anymore. So they they have dropped all their rosters. Uh, so nothing, no word on the roster itself from the announcement or anything like that. We don't know for sure. Uh, you know what's you know what's going to happen with the group mm-hmm. of six but uh we do know they're not going to be playing under the tempo storm banner anymore and tempo was never a team i personally targeted or thought was a team that was going to target an overwatch league spot um so not a big surprise uh, you know for me to see that yeah not at that price point no uh and the other two things we did have happen this week was nrg has decided to let go of numlock as i said earlier this this roster needs a a reworking from mm-hmm. the top down i think and uh numlock has proven to be a solid uh solid tank player i think of him more as a reinhardt than i do as a reinhardt slash winston personally mm-hmm. but uh so I don't, I don't know if that's why um seems like a 
odd time to do it, right? With all the Reinhardt changes coming up from PTR, mm-hmm. but um, you know, and you also have Doomfist coming out, promising to shake up the meta quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, so who knows exactly you know what fueled this, but um, you know maybe they just spent a lot of time on PTR and decided Winston was probably still going to be the way to go and made that decision as well. So uh, the other move we did see is one, two, three, as you'll remember them from Overwatch Contenders EU side of things. They will be in the next season. And they've decided to drop Kodak and bringing in a familiar face, Hoffy Cool, to trial with them now. So uh, great to see those kind of upstart teams really unlock that extra level of you know, uh, talent that they're able to access and try out and, um, you know, you know, trial, uh, when they're, when they have openings and they decided to, uh, drop Kodak and Haffy cool, if I remember correctly, is a diva player. So, um, in, in the current state of the meta, a diva player has a really, really big opportunity to make a big impact in the game. So, uh, could see them level up by the time the, the contenders season one comes around, uh, which I cannot wait for personally. I'm like, I'm itching for that. Um, but I, we've got to ride out the world cup storm for a little bit. And thankfully it got a little more, uh, <laughs> a little more, uh, competitive for us. So yeah. we'll I think to... the top eight honestly is going to be awesome to watch. I think they've done, I think that the, the way they did it this, this week, or I'm um, sorry, this, uh, this year is just, it actually builds it up more, and I think the teams really tried, and I think they set it up for the teams to try, and I think it's just, just all around better. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one thing I thought was cool, too, is having, and I don't remember them just doing this before, at least they weren't as big of a production, um, you know, uh, uh, event, mm-hmm. but I, I love that they're playing in these different venues, mm-hmm. and it, how cool was it to watch the whole, oh, I mean, oh, and for, this is a conversation, we might as well have it here, because yeah. it's the end of the notes, and there's nothing else to talk about. <laughs> Um, and as a heads up to people, there may be during the World Cup weeks, if there's a 3-0, 3-0, 3-0 week of the World Cup, we may skip an episode. So our apologies ahead of time. Um, as you can tell, we're, we're if we're already out of content, that's a pretty fast turnaround yeah. uh, and not the norm for us. So, um, but Although this for weekend, what it's worth, we are just passing the point where the show is going to be longer than our pre-show. Oh man! Well, the dream is dead, but we'll 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 live <laughs> the on. Dream I guess. is dead. Um, but yeah, so we saw the prime uh, example of home field advantage and the effect it yes. can have this weekend. And we talked previously about how we want to encourage people to boo the opposing team at esports events. So I'm telling you guys, if you're going to the World Cup in uh, the U.S., okay? When Team USA is playing, I want you cheering your face off when we get kills, and I want you booing when uh, Team USA gets wiped. We saw it makes a huge difference, and it was fun. Like, Sweden got into a little bit, I guess. We don't see the in-game chat, okay, Uh, during these events. They turn that off from the spectators. But the commentators get to see it, and they were able to clue us in a little bit. I I guess Reinforce was kind of... Uh, talking a little smack at Australia when they met up in the group stages. And boy, wouldn't wouldn't it be a shame if this Australian crowd didn't get to root for a victorious Australian team today? And, you know, all these things. So just a a really fun element to it. I think them kind of having these uh, larger production events uh, go on in the regions, having the home crowd play there. So um, just something we wanted to point out, you know, we we're not right often enough to let it slide by when we are right. When we make good points, we have to keep bringing them up over and over again. uh, So that way you think we're right more often than we are, Uh, but home field advantage, advantage and the crowd favoritism and the impact that you can have when you are at an event is real you can oh, always, you can almost reach out and touch it it is a palpable thing that impacts the players makes a huge difference so participate in it you know go if these if these if you're lucky enough for these to be near you go because people like me and the blevins are dying that we're over here in like you know a smaller city where this stuff will yeah. never show up it's a long drive to get anywhere um I mean, we're. De- so, I mean, I'm definitely going to all the East Coast ones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, any that are Northeast will, yeah, will Northeast, probably I mean, just road trip. Yeah, too. I'm not gonna. I'm probably not going to Florida, but the Boston and New York ones. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, New York. We'll go to New York. Boston and New York are like the same distance apart. Yeah, oh, you just anyway. hate Boston, guys. Yeah, of course. Oh. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> not the city, <laughs> just the people. Oh, okay. <laughs> I actually hate the city, too, the way it's laid out, but that's another. <laughs> I haven't spent enough time there to hate it for its layout, but uh, I'll take your word for it. I don't need I don't need uh, a lot of fact-checking to agree with some reason <laughs> to hate Boston. You know? so, uh, let's just do it. Yeah, Boston's the worst. Let's not go. 
I mean, we're still going, but nope. <laughs> I'm going. Uh, yeah, the roads also, are awful. The roads are awful. I Thanks. have uh, I have a buddy there that can hook me up too. So and he wants to go. So whatever. I don't need. I don't need you. Good. <laughs> yeah, those roads are absolutely awful, and it was freezing cold when I was there for PAX. Uh, as was Phelan, who was checking out in the chat. Um, but yeah, it's uh, like we, we've talked about this before, and we haven't. And, and I'm actually kind of, I'm kind of happy that we're like the only two in this space, in the esports space. That's like, yeah, no, no, boo. Like everyone else is like, no, everyone should just be cheering for everything. Don't boo the other. Forget team. that noise. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Absolutely not. You boo. Do you mm-hmm. want esports to be a sport? Yeah, you do. Okay, so we're booing. I get, yeah, that's all I need booing. to know. That's all I need to know. Booing, you taunting, want this to be a sport? Yeah, I want it. Like, if you want it to be its own thing that's separate, you know, and not not mirroring sports, fine. Right. If I'll, you want it to be I'll something that's not mirroring rules. sports, and you want people to be like, oh, this is just some thing that silly millennials do, like then yeah, <laughs> don't boo. Like create the safe space and have everyone get trophies. That's that's what you did. Like if you want to perpetuate the stereotype of millennials and like our generation by all means do that but there will be at least two big ass bearded dudes in the back booing the non-us teams every time yep or the boston teams or the boston Boston. well i'm i def i like by default have to have the boston team be my favorite team all right well then i'm driving to the esports events we go to so that i can leave you there if you start booing I just hope that they like model it after the Red Sox and not the Patriots. Cause like all joking aside, I don't care about the Patriots. I just like them to troll, but I do like the Red Sox. That makes sense. You, you, you've never been, you'll never have a football conversation with me. So I know you don't no. actually like the Patriots. No, no, but, no. I mean, they are my uh, favorite team and, and they are the greatest team that's ever lived. But besides that, like, I right. Don't but when that, <laughs> yeah, when that's one sentence after you telling me, I don't care. I'm just <laughs> um, it, it takes the sting out of it, you know? Uh, yeah. So do just, so doom fist. It's got to be fun to get a rise out of me too. <laughs> oh, it is. So so how about that doom fist? Anything more to say about him? Well, honestly, yeah. So I don't know. I the last we talked about doom fist, I was very convinced he was going to make kind of an immediate splash uh, in the meta game and and really you know do a good job of shaking things up. Mm-hmm. And now I think he's still got a, a very strong opportunity to do that, but I'm not at all sure he's going to be equipped to do it. And and here's why: I've never seen a character in Overwatch have so many counters. I wouldn't want to play. Widowmaker again. I wouldn't want to play him, uh, you know, play as him against Widowmaker, against Hanzo, uh, McCree, Farah. Um, I, Zen's not a bad matchup, as I can tell you <laughs> from what I've seen so far. I mean, if he hits the pin, sure, I'm dead. But if anybody hits anything on me, I'm dead anyway. So, um, you know, I don't think he's a spe- you know much easier to to get the drop on me. Um, and I definitely see zero room for him in dive, right? Because yeah. the he's thing about Genji, Doom, right? What's that? He's just bad Genji. He's not bad Genji. He's he's Genji esque, but he's so different. And the reason is is because Genji maintains his mobility throughout the fight. Okay, mm-hmm. and Doomfist has either mobility or damage. Mm-hmm. He never has both. Okay, right. unless you're accidentally hitting people when you're when you're diving in with your abilities. Mm-hmm. So all your skills are so tied to your damage, even if they're your movement abilities, that you can't really use them to initiate from far away. Like you can't dive in. Uh, you have to like walk in and hide and, and, you know, jump down uh, without actually jumping mm-hmm. uh, or using any, any abilities and go in that way in order to really get much done. So, um, you know, I think he's going to be really, really high impact when you notice an opportunity for him. Like, I don't know that we're going to see teams roll out Doomfist to start the map, mm-hmm. uh, especially on say defense where, um, the attackers have the spawn advantage, like on King's Row, right? When you can just peek out and be like, oh, I see a Doomfist, we're back. I'm just going to go back. And then now we've got Widowmaker, we've got Hanzo, and we're good, and, and he can't do anything anymore. Yeah. Um, you might see people rush out with him on attack because the uh, t- you know the opposing team or the defending team doesn't have much opportunity to counter him uh, until the fight's already won and over. But, um, yeah, I don't know. He seems very narrow in his usage right now uh, mm-hmm. to me and the way I see him fitting in. We tried the comp that... Um, Tavik pointed out and said is what he thinks it's going to run, and that was uh, Winston, Zarya, Diva, um, 
with the Doomfist as the sole DPS, and then you have, you know, whichever healers you want. I don't think he specified. We tried it with the Ana since there was three tanks. Mm. And it's really weird. I don't know. There's just, there's got to be a right way to play Doomfist that I haven't seen yet. Um, and until we, somebody finds it now, if somebody finds it right away, great. But, uh, I don't think his, his immediate home or, you know, his best spot, his best usage, his best play style even, uh, is just going to be unlocked on day one. So I, I yeah. think anything we do see with him is probably going to be wrong. Um, mm-hmm. whether it's successful or not, we'll have to wait and see. Um, or, but hopefully with how quiet things have been, like there's a lot of players on a lot of teams right now that aren't in the world cup. And don't have anything to do right now. Right. Um, and they have teammates that are at the World Cup and traveling, and they can't. So they're kind of probably, I would assume, picking up fillers and and still scrimming anyways, mm-hmm. and probably spending, hopefully, spending more time on PTR than they normally otherwise would. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what level of of comfort they have with the hero when it comes out. Um, but for a team that that tried to pick them up pretty quick, like if you're haven't spent any time in PTR on them and you have a play group or a team that's going to start playing, just don't use them for the first two days. Just always have a, you know, a heavy hitter, single shot damage hero or a Pharah that can fly and literally never be touched even remotely possibly by a doom fist. Like, <laughs> I don't know how that comp that Tavik laid out beats a pharmacy. I mean, other than the fact that you can use Diva to counter it, but if like the entire focus of the ground fight becomes just kill the Diva. And then, like, your Farah can literally 1v5 every, yeah. or 1v6. Like, you can kill the Diva out of Mac now, <laughs> yeah. and then you can kill the entire rest of the team. Like, I, I think that's going to be a, a pretty solid way to attack it. So, um, yeah, I don't know. He's he's a mystery wrapped in a riddle to me at the moment, and we were losing to a team with a lower SR when we were forcing ourselves to use him because mm-hmm. it's PTR, and you feel like you have to. And then I'm like all right, they are using him, so let's try to counter him. And it was just so easy. I mean, it was like night and day, um, the success we had uh, compared to when we were playing him and when we weren't. Yeah, I mean, I think most of those characters, and I think especially like, and because I think of him as like a fighting game character because he just feels so much like a fighting game character. They even said in the one video that he's just, he's basically a love letter to the fighting game community. Just, yeah. hey guys. Most of the time, those characters with those types of movement abilities, like the level one, like, oh, this is the combo you can do. Uh, that's never what's best. That's like the, okay, you can have a mild amount of success as someone who's just picking him up and do stuff with him. Mm-hmm. But, like, the unlocking Doomfist, I think, is going to be something completely different. Like, using his abilities in a, in a brand new way. Uh, and finding, like... like I, I mean, maybe he is, like, the... Um, maybe he is, like, a, uh, a, a Sombra that's, you know, very good on certain maps and just not really used that much or used sparingly on certain points in certain maps. Um, it just doesn't seem like he's going to be... I don't think he's going to be a Genji or even a 76 where it's like, okay, well, we're just, you can, you can have him be your other DPS just like at a whim. I think he's going to be more of a niche uh, and, and a build around or at least have like people that combo with him. Yeah. I mean, I do still think he might be the ultimate counter when you're catching a dive, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, because I don't know that there's any hero you can't combo down if you do it right. You know, and it involves weaving your left clicks in in between every ability and using all three abilities. But um, when a backliner jumps on you, if you everything you do stuns on Doomfist. So once you start the combo, you're able to execute it if you're able to execute it. So um, I think he's still going to be really good. You know, if you're able to get the stun and, and kind of get things started on that Tracer, or that Genji, mm-hmm. uh, they're going to die instantly. I mean, just just gone. Uh, it'll be it'll be really quick so uh he'll definitely be good there but like you said it's it's where is it good where is it Mm -hmm. easy to expose and um if you're on defense can you afford which is usually where you're catching dives unless it's something like cough um you know if you're on defense can you afford to run him knowing you're only going to win that one fight you know if you're that easily countered it's still not worth it to to catch that dive with him right and he's good 1v1 but like how often does that happen in competitive yeah not often yeah so uh i mean this is all speculation now but we'll definitely see we probably won't even see like honestly even if they allow him in uh uh in apex that we probably won't see him if it's even remotely close 
Yeah, I think you'd need to see a blowout for him to come out. Although the Perfect. hype will be real. Yeah, and if, the chat spam will be real. Yeah, it'll be great. I will. Uh, I'll be happy if that happens. But yeah, man, I think that's uh, that's just about it. Thank you. I'm amazed we stretched it this long. Yeah, we're <laughs> at just about 40 minutes, so like almost a respectable length. Almost. Almost. Not not quite, but... Five minutes short of the, the minimum we shoot for, uh, which we've never even come close to in any previous episodes, to my yeah, knowledge. I don't like, think so. I don't think we've been near the 45-minute mark before. Yeah, but this is just, this is just, you know, it is what it is, but... Yeah. That, that's going to be it, guys. Um, if you have any suggestion, like, like, next week is probably a really good week to do something off the beaten path. Um, so if you guys are listening and you have any suggestions, uh, for just another type of topic, I know usually a Smith has some good ideas, just something that isn't necessarily, uh, doesn't necessarily have anything to do with this week. We'll still go over all the, the matches that happened, but if you have an idea for something you wanted to see that maybe we just didn't have time to do because of the schedule of, of overwatch tournaments, I think this week's probably a good week to do that. We've got a suggestion for to bring Phelan back uh that actually might be a good idea if he can do Mondays uh but we'll look into it so uh, we'll bring Phelan back who hasn't listened or know anything about Overwatch for the longest time we'll bring him back on just to see um we'll mute him if he mentions Halo don't yeah. worry it's been so long since we've mentioned Halo on the show but um so yeah if you guys have suggestions for that uh tweet him at us at high noon podcast um but yeah, death. Any any last minute stuff to uh, bring up before we we kick it off? Uh, I don't think so because I wasn't paying attention to what you just said, and I think you gave out the website. No, I didn't. URL. I didn't. No, I you didn't. Specifically left well, it for you. Well then, uh, in that case, you can find all of our contact information for the show and us individually uh, on highnoonpodcast.com. There is a host page along with the main page having links to everywhere where you can listen to watch. Uh, watch, you know, watch the episodes or get in contact with us, tweet at us, anything like that. Um, also, I have not been getting a huge influx of VODs uh, to review. So if you did watch that video and you did like it, you know, please do me a favor. Um, send in a match that you've played. Um, please try to keep the video quality. This is what's hurting me right now is please try to keep two things uh, in decent order. The video quality has to be at least semi-decent and passable. So that way it looks presentable. Like it's going to get re-encoded and everything like that after I, after I record it. Um, so it has to start out at a pretty decent spot. Uh, and also either turn the volume of your friends yelling and screaming and swearing and saying racial things down to a minimum <laughs> or uh, just don't, you know, do it in solo queue so that it's not there. Um, that would be great. Otherwise, I mean, I didn't go and I don't know specifically that they said anything too crazy in the one that I had where, where the, they were just too loud basically. Um, but you know, obviously a uh, cancerous chat would be a problem as well. Yeah. So I, I wanted to address that. Um, yeah. Uh, please send those in. Uh, just drop them into an unlisted YouTube and then a discord message or tweet at us with the link and I'll make sure I check them out. And if I can, I'll turn it into a video. Yeah. The high noon solo queue pod, uh, uh, podcast, podcast review. review. Yeah, <laughs> Vod review. review. Vod reviews, yes. Uh, definitely. Uh, you know what? Maybe, ooh, maybe I'll do one. Ooh. Step one, play the game a little Step bit. Step one, play, play at least one match of Overwatch. Ah, too much. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> Try playing like 11 or 12 games this season, Blevs. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But no, yeah, no, no. I mean, I would be happy to to do a, a VOD review for you. That would be kind of cool because um, it will be awful. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, as Death said, highnoonpodcast.com has all the good all the good links, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, SoundCloud. Uh, guys, please remember, if you have not already, leave us an iTunes review, the, the food that fuels a podcast, um, as always. <laughs> Um, always like those. Um, huge thanks to uh, Matcherino for sponsoring our SoundCloud. So for those of you uh, SoundCloud listeners, you can always uh, thank Matcherino for that. And huge thanks to Adam Hoek for the awesome outro music, which you are about to hear in just a second. Uh, I think that's going to be it, guys. Uh, so for Deathblow, I am the Blevins. And remember, it's high noon. Got his boots and he put on his hat. He threw the coin away that same day. It's in his past and he's not looking back. He says, fine.
mine and mine now guides my way. He's not good, but he sure ain't bad. He'll make amends for the sins that he has. He says, I'll change the world one bullet at a time. Till I find mine. Wild and Soldier blue. says, failing if you want to be on the show, you gotta stop using a controller. Woo! Like forever, stop.